Hey there, Space Cats! Now, this is a subject that I am increasingly excited about. Hand lettering your book. Welcome, my friend, to the channel which is obsessed with children's books, picture books and illustration. I have been writing and illustrating picture books for the last decade or more. And for the last three and a half years, I've been bringing you video topics to help you do the same. So let's pose the question, can I really hand letter my book? Broadly, the answer is yes. But wait, don't flick off to the next video. I haven't got to the nuances of the answer. Nuances. Firstly, why, when everything is done on the computer, would I want to hand letter my front cover or my story. Here's the thing. Hand lettering is a bit like illustrating a picture, but if you swear you can't draw, you can still illustrate letters. If you've ever seen an illustrated manuscript, then you'll know how beautiful they can be. In the days before computers or the printing press, people, mainly monks, used calligraphy to write out spiritual texts as artwork it was a long labour of love. So that is where illustrated text started. But why would we want to go back to that when computers can do all that hard work for us? Hand letters are unique. There are no repeating patterns. You can tell if something is truly hand-lettered by choosing one of the letters with a tail, say, for example, a Y, and check them against one another to see if they are identical or if there are similarities or exactly identical. If they are identical, then it's probably come from a hand-lettered typeface. It's a much more expressive way of conveying information about your story more meaningful than using computer-generated typography. It can give you a feeling about the story that you just won't get from typeset. One of the things that you need to consider is how much text you need to or are willing to create. If it's a picture book, you might want to create some hand lettering for the front cover or maybe inside for something like if someone shouts something or, or there's a particular phrase or word that you want to stand out. Typically, a picture book has less than a thousand words to it, so you might even be brave enough to think, I can do the whole lot. But even up to a thousand words is still going to take you quite a while, so make sure you take that into consideration. If you've written a chapter book or something for older children, then writing it out by hand is probably an unrealistic goal. You want it to look neat and readable, as well as attractive. And if you've written something the length of a Harry Potter novel, you will never achieve that objective. At least, not without sending yourself potty. Having said that, there is always someone who breaks the rules. Here is a book that I've had for many years, all hand-lettered bar the front cover. It's not a children's book, but it does give you a sense of what the book is about. You might be wondering where to start, so here are a few tips to get you started. Number one, make yourself a lined template to use so that lines of text will be straight. You still want it to look professional, and one surefire way to make it look awful is to have the lines disappearing off the page. However, if it's a title or a random word or two, you won't need to use lines. Just do it by eye. Number two, find a book on hand lettering to help you practice your work. I have this one, which has really helped me to form my own letters. Number three, it's not just the form of the letters, but also the design of them. Think about how you are going to colour them. Are they going to be a block of plain colour or a gradient? Or are you going to doodle within them? Number four, practice your letters on some rough paper before you apply them in pencil to your final piece of work. 
You can use tracing paper or layout paper to help you transfer the rough letters onto your nice paper. Number five, please make sure you spell check everything. It's so much harder to fix a mistake when you are hand lettering. And lastly, if your handwriting is not that great, you might consider asking a friend who has good penmanship to help you out. You might need to pay them or you might need to take them out for several cream teas. I'll let you negotiate that one. Finally, here are a few of my favourite hand lettered books. If you've been hanging around me for any length of time, you'll know that I absolutely love Oliver Jeffers, Alex T. Smith and a few others. But this is one of my favourite books of all because the hand lettering is exquisite. And he's an absolute, well, he's a very clever man when it comes to using typography. Little Red and the Very Hungry Lion, front cover hand lettered and then inside there's a page like this where there's just one big word that's hand lettered or a spread with children's writing on it that really gives the idea that a child wrote this plan and then there's Tidy by Emily Gravett now I think this is hand lettered but it's a bit difficult to tell because you can't really judge one letter up against another. She just uses it very sparingly throughout to highlight words of importance. And then the front cover of The Whale Who Wanted More by Rachel Bright and Jim Field. Jim Field is the illustrator. And you can see on this that he has illustrated, hand lettered these words here, whereas whale I think is probably computer generated. And then inside there are a few examples of using words individually. I love using hand lettering so I've used it on quite a few of my own books including Bloomin' Marvellous which is pretty much all the way through hand lettered apart from the beginning of the chapter where I've just written a bit about what happened in that month. Tell me if you are considering using your own fair hand to hand letter your book. What are the things that you think are going to be the hardest to accomplish? And finally, if you guys have any requests for topics that I haven't already covered, then make sure you drop me a comment. Because you guys ask me some really great questions that I haven't even thought of. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! Next week I'll be looking at what to do with your first published book if you are too shy to show people or are worried about what they might say. I'm off to Chilla Chinchilla I will see you next week. Nanu nanu.